In today's video, we're going to shine a pair of bespoke John Lobb dress shoes. I'm Kirby Allison, and I love helping the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes. Join me as we explore the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. Very excited to have received our first pair of bespoke John Lobb dress shoes. These are from John Lobb in London, you know, the uh, historical John Lobb, uh, the original, if you will, uh, the one that is still controlled by the family. Uh, there's a lot of confusion between the John Lobbs. We've got a ton of content on this channel about John Lobb. Of course, we've got our feature link documentary on John Lobb, 69 St. James's Street. But we've also got a lot of great shoe reviews about John Lobb Paris, uh, which has a ready-to-wear collection uh, and a factory in Northampton and also does bespoke shoes. It's a little bit confusing, so at the beginning of this video, I just wanted to spend a few seconds really differentiating these two firms. What happened in the 1970s, John Lobb really split into two different companies. You had the original family-controlled John Lobb, only in London, only doing bespoke shoes, no ready-to-wear stuff. And then you had John Lobb Paris, which was purchased by the Hermes Group, uh, that developed uh, its own ready-to-wear collection of Goodyear welted leather dress shoes uh, that are made at a factory in Northampton and really sold all around the world. There's no question that John Lobb Paris uh, really, in so many ways, uh, spread John Lobb throughout the world. I mean, of course, John Lobb was already renowned and known, but they were only doing bespoke shoes, and so unless you were spending, you know, $6,000 plus on a pair of bespoke shoes, you couldn't own a pair of John Lobb shoes until Hermes purchased them and developed their ready-to-wear collection. Uh, so this is an actual pair of bespoke John Lobbs from London. And I just want to take a moment to show you uh, really one of the only ways uh, to really differentiate or uh, conclusively identify whether or not a pair of shoes is bespoke from London. And that, of course, would be the royal warrants on the inside. Of course, it is only John Lobb London, the family-controlled firm of the original Lobbs, uh, that has the royal warrants uh, from the British royal family. Um, so here, you see it right here. You've got, you know, his royal appointment to uh, the Prince of Wales, uh, to the Duke of Edinburgh, and Queen Elizabeth. So to say that uh, they've got their royal warrants covered, uh, it would be uh, an understatement. And not only do they have the three primary royal warrants from the British royal family, but anyone that walks into John Lobb uh, London and St. James's Street uh, knows that they have royal warrants from countless other royal families uh, from around the world. So there's no question that whenever it comes to prestige, there is no more prestigious shoe than one made from John Lobb in London on 69 St. James's Street. So this is a pair that was sent in uh, for our Shoe Shine program. Of course, we've got a Shine by Mail program available here at Kirby Allison. Uh, if you don't want to take the time to shine the shoes yourself or if they need a little bit of extra love and attention, send them to us and we'll be happy to take care of them. Uh, so this was sent to us. It's very exciting to receive our first pair of uh, bespoke John Lops. So we're going to film a video and take special care, uh, extra special care of these shoes here. Uh, so this is a simple uh, black cap to Oxford. It's got a little bit of punching across the cap. It's a beautiful shoe, uh, but you can tell it's certainly uh, an older shoe. I think that uh, the customer told us that this shoe was made sometime uh, in the 80s or 90s, if I remember correctly. Uh, so it's certainly been around the block, so to say. There's a little bit of cracking across the vamp right here, very slight. Uh, we're going to condition this uh, thoroughly with the Renovateur. So without further ado, let's get started on these beautiful shoes. I already removed the shoelaces from the left pair. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the shoelaces from the right pair. Um, you know, generally speaking, I don't like to remove shoelaces whenever I'm shining a pair of shoes, unless it is a, something like a, an annual shine, you know, a presidential shoe shine, uh, the most thorough of shoe shines we offer. The reason is, is because every single time you remove shoelaces and relace them, you're going to be putting strain and wear on the eyelets, and I just find it unnecessary, especially for a normal shine. The other problem is it significantly raises the threshold uh, of the amount of time you have to spend with your shine, and for most people, that means that they're going to avoid doing it. So you're always better off just doing a quick shine with the shoelaces in your shoes than not doing it because you didn't want to remove them. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do is to remove the buildup of hard wax that's on this toe. You can kind of see where it's uneven right here, right? So you can see the pores of the leather right here at the toe, and this is really quite smooth. So instead of just hitting it hard with the Reno mat, which you could do also, uh, I'm actually going to use the heat gun 
to, uh, to melt those waxes, to soften them up so that I can just simply pull them off using a, a cotton chamois. And then I'll take a little bit of Reno mat on top of that. So you just want enough heat to soften those waxes up. And then I'm just gonna take my chamois and just rub those off. I'm actually gonna reinsert this shoe tree. Okay, well, so we pulled as much off using the heat gun. Again, if you've got something like a mirror shine, the heat gun uh, really helps because, uh, you know, fresh mirror shine that you're removing is really caked up, and so the heat gun helps pull a lot of those waxes off before you hit it with the Reno mat. Now, the Reno mat, of course, is safe to use on all leathers, uh, but there's no question that it's just one more chemical you're kind of putting on the leather, so I try to avoid it as much as I can. So I've taken a brief break to allow the Reno mat to just fully evaporate off. Um, next, what we're gonna do is a little bit of a deep maintenance here uh, before we condition and polish. So these shoes have kind of really gone through a lot and there's a few things uh, I really wanna take care of um, before we go into polishing. Now first, there's a few kind of loose threads, you know, right here. Uh, this is normal and really not a problem. And what I like to do is to just kind of burn those off singes them uh, and then it prevents this from further fraying so uh, just like on any type of shirt or sweater uh, it's really kind of the best way to take care of it so I'm just looking around to see if we have any loose uh, uh, kind of threads that are frayed and that's really kind of it so there we go we've got the only two there um, great okay so next uh, these shoes are really kind of in for what I'd call the presidential shoe shine, the 100,000 mile kind of maintenance. Uh, and one of the things that you can tell is that the edges uh, and the heels are really rough. So one of the things that I want to do to kind of refinish these is actually take some sandpaper to them. Uh, this is some 150 grit uh, sandpaper that I'll use to kind of smooth this out, especially at the heel. So I like to do that before I condition and shine, uh, just because I'm kind of working around uh, this area. And so I don't wanna get the uppers all shiny and then mess it up uh, in any way uh, by sanding the edges. So let's get started. Uh, this is, again, just some sandpaper uh, that I got at the, uh, the hardware store. And I'm gonna be very careful. I'm just gonna do this kind of on the flat edges. Now, if you really want to be professional, you can get some broken shards of glass. That's actually what the shoemakers will use. Uh, but sandpaper is a, a good kind of approachable substitute, probably a little bit safer on the hands. Here at the heel, I'm going to avoid this fudging because I don't want to sand that off. I don't have a fudge wheel. I, I can't re-fudge this. So I'm just going to keep this to the bottom part of the heel. And again, I'm just trying to smooth it out. For one, it'll help the, it'll get any of the waxes off of this, anything that's been placed on top of the heel. Uh, and it'll allow us to kind of refinish this smooth. And you can see something uh, that I like to call driver's heel. Uh, always on any shoe, the right heel is always rougher than the left. Again, because when you're driving, uh, the right heel always gets more wear. Okay, so uh, after I do this, you know, you don't wanna go crazy. It's easy to go crazy on this. The point is to really just kind of re-smooth the edge as much as possible. Uh, you know, without going too crazy. You can see we've really taken a lot of the dye off, so we're gonna have to re-dye this and really refinish these edges. Uh, this is kind of on the advanced uh, edge and heel care, if you will. Uh, one of the things I like to do, just because we've ended up with a really kind of fine particle of leather dust everywhere, 
So I like to put a little bit of just water on my brush and just buff those edges just to get any of those fine particles off uh, because that'll prevent the, um, the uh, edge dressing from really kind of absorbing into the leather. So it's just kind of like a, a gentle clean, if you will, after you've ended up with kind of leather dust everywhere. Now you want to be careful that you don't hit the upper leather uh, with the sandpaper. Again, on a black pair of shoes, uh, it would be easy to fix. You just could hit it with a little bit of leather dye. Uh, but on a brown or anything like that, you really would want to, you know, stay away from that as much as possible. Um, okay. So there we go. Uh, great. So next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dye the edges using the alcohol-based leather dye. Now again, that's not going to fully saturate and finish, uh, but it'll help penetrate that leather. It's gonna provide that background that then whenever we do the black pomander cream polish, uh, you'll really have something that's opaque uh, or solid. Uh, be very careful with this. If you spill it uh, on your desk or on anything, you'll ruin it. Uh, that comes with a little cotton applicator. So I'm gonna put this in here, right? Again, I wanna be very careful. And then I'm gonna take the cap, kinda of take off any of the excess right there. And then what I'm gonna do is just really kind of re-dye uh, the edges and the heels. Again, you don't want this stuff to drip uh, because it will definitely permanently dye. So very carefully. If you're really worried, like on a brown pair of shoes, of getting the upper, one of the tricks is you can put just a little bit of masking tape uh, on the upper just to kind of help protect that. Uh, but I'm not that worried. Okay, so I think we've got that. Just double checking, make sure I didn't miss any areas. Nice saturation. But again, you can still, it's uh, still quite flat. And so that is where the uh, Saphir uh, Pomodoro Cream Polish is gonna come in handy. The Pomodoro Cream Polish is an exceptional edge dressing. Uh, if your edges are already well finished and kind of well dyed, uh, then uh, you really wouldn't need to use uh, any of the alcohol-based leather dye. Uh, I would go straight to a pomadier cream polish. This is what's going to really add that pigment. Again, cream polish uh, has uh, several times more pigment than a wax polish, and this is what's going to provide that saturation. Uh, the other great thing about the pomadier cream polishes is you've got a bunch of colors. So if you've got a brown pair of shoes, you can use a medium or a tobacco brown. You could even use the dark brown. And so it really allows you a greater uh, flexibility or greater choice uh, than just having a brown and a black, which uh, you know most shoe dyes are only available in two colors. So I'm going to apply this with my finger. It's going to allow me to just have more control uh, in getting this into the leather. And you really want to kind of push this in, if you will. I mean, apply kind of medium pressure, um, you know, as you're doing this. Again, you've got more control with the finger. And you want to allow this time to dry. Uh, after it's dried, then I'll buff it with a horsehair, or even better, a pig bristle brush. Uh, the first coat uh, will start to start to shine up a little bit, uh, but I really think it's the wax or the mirror gloss that's really going to kind of light that up. And so we'll see that here in a second. Okay, so I've finished applying uh, that black cream polish. So um, 
I'm gonna let that dry as much as possible. And so a little shortcut I'm gonna take here is I'm gonna go ahead and apply the Renovator before I buff off that uh, black cream polish. Again, the Renovator is like liquid gold for uh, leather. Uh, it's one of our most versatile products to neutral. And you can use it on practically everything. Uh, calf skin, cordovan, crocodile, alligator, uh, really any smooth leather. The only exception being suede. You wouldn't wanna use it on suede, of course. Uh, and this is going to really hydrate and feed that leather. So I always say apply generously, especially kind of across the vamp, you know, those areas of the shoe that are especially prone to cracking if they dry out. Medium to firm pressure. Uh, and this is a product uh, that if you have the luxury of time, uh, I'd say even apply this and let it sit overnight. Uh, the longer that you leave this, uh, on the leather, the only, uh, the only thing that's gonna happen is the more it's going to absorb. And that's probably even more important than multiple coats. Uh, one coat of this is generally fine. I mean, you can always apply more than one if you want to, but I'd say one uh, generously applied coat that you allow a sufficient time to absorb into the leather uh, really will do the trick. The other thing I like about the Renovator is that it does have a, um, does have a light wax on it. So, uh, if you're in a pinch and you just want to quickly uh, shine a pair of shoes, uh, what's nice about the Renovator is it'll condition uh, and it'll provide a soft shine. All right, that's really looking good. So let me set that left shoe aside. Uh, let's take a look at the right one. Okay, so you can see that this is dried. Uh, really, you can feel it. If it feels tacky to the hand, it hasn't dried yet. Uh, also, the color or the texture, you can see that this is a nice kind of satin uh, finish. So uh, that really means that those waxes have dried here on kind of the interior side of the shoe. You can see we still have some waxes that haven't dried. No big deal. Just get those off. Uh, and then next, what we're gonna do is buff. So this is one of our Wellington uh, pig bristle brushes. What I like about pig bristle is it's stiffer than horsehair. Um, both are great. This is gonna provide a higher shine, but this is gonna pr uh, provide a little bit of a coarser buff. Uh, and so here, where I'm kind of buffing that edge dressing that I've applied quite thick along the edges and heels, uh, the pig bristle brush is just gonna do a better job really getting any excess off and, and producing a nice kind of soft shine. So let's get started. Okay, first buff, uh, there we go. You know, nice, not too bad. I mean, one of the things uh, that I'm really kind of enjoying to see develop here is just this leather. I mean, these are bespoke John Lobb shoes from the 1980s. Uh, these are an old pair of shoe. This leather, after all those years, is still really soft. It's got a beautiful kind of even grain structure. Uh, and, you know, aside from kind of the odd crack, you know, in the upper, just because again, these have been uh, really well worn. I mean, like for instance, this crack right here isn't because of the weather, uh, of the leather being dry, but uh, more is probably kind of a scratch uh, from just the wear. Uh, the shoes are actually in really good condition. Um, yeah, surprisingly, I mean, there's a little bit of separation here, just where they cut in to the invisible channel stitch and kind of here where the sole meets the welt. Uh, but again, a shoe that's been worn, uh, you know, over the course of 30 years, you know, probably through rain, you expect to see that a little bit. And one of the beautiful things about John Lobb is of course you could take these shoes back, you know, they'd relast them on your original last and completely resole them. And if these shoes were to go through the resoling uh, program at John Lobb, you know, I would expect them to come back really looking almost new. So absolutely beautiful shoes and really it's, uh, it's quite a pleasure and an honor to be able to shine a pair of bespoke John Lobb shoes. So let's do just another quick coat of the Saphir Renovator, uh, just to give these uh, the royal treatment, if you will, uh, fitting of a pair of John Lobb shoes. And then after that, we'll move uh, to the uh, pigmented cream polish. Uh, 
Okay, so I've allowed that second coat of Renovator a little bit of time to dry. I'm gonna take my pig bristle brush. Here it is, trusty pig bristle Wellington brush, available at curvyallison.com. Uh, and I'm just gonna rebuff this. bristles were a little wet on that big bristle brush, switching to the horsehair. And you can see the horsehair gets a higher shine because again, it's a softer uh, hair than the pig bristle. And so uh, actually for this second coat of run of the tour, we're really getting a better buff. I mean, look at how that's just starting to line up and all we've used is a little bit of run of the tour. Beautiful, look at that. So the next one I'm gonna do is again, just to speed things up a bit, I'm gonna go ahead and apply my first coat of the pigmented cream polish, of course, the Saphir Pomadeer Cream Polish. Exceptional stuff. I mean, not only does it feed the leather, but it's got that pigment that's just essential for refinishing a pair of shoes. So I'm gonna apply this. It'll allow the Rinne Vitor a little bit more time to dry, uh, and then I'll kind of alternate uh, just to kind of speed things up here again. So I've got my trusty High Shine Chamois. It's really uh, what I prefer to use uh, in all of my um, uh, applications. And again, less is more, pigmented cream polish. And you wanna apply it using medium to firm pressure to really work it into the leather. You can be quite liberal again, especially with black. I mean, if you get a little bit on the edges, uh, that's perfectly fine, uh, as you know. And especially kind of across the vamp, here along the edge, kind of where uh, the welt meets the upper. You want to really kind of get it into those nooks uh, and crannies. Cream polish is so important. I tell the customers uh, that if you were to only use one product, uh, use a cream polish, a pigmented cream polish. It won't give you that high shine uh, that you get through a wax polish, but it'll certainly do uh, the majority of the job and kind of hit as many of those check boxes, uh, check box boxes as possible. Okay, so while that cream polish is drying, I'm gonna take my horsehair brush and buff the run of the tour off the left hair. Okay, got that worked in. Now, let's buff off our first coat of that black cream polish. Now here, I mean, again, uh, I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but just look how much more even this finish looks just after one application of the black cream polish. And this is on a black pair of shoes. I mean, you would expect to see it even less on a black pair of shoes than a brown. And again, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to use a pigmented cream polish, especially, or even on a black pair of shoes, uh, it's going to make a difference in terms of evening out that finish uh, versus just using a neutral. On a brown pair of shoes, even more important. I mean, for one, it'll fix or conceal scuffing, uh, any type of bruising to the leather. Again, it'll help conceal and even out. So important. Beautiful, I mean, these shoes are really starting to come together. Again, we haven't even touched the wax polishes yet, but uh, again, nice soft shine. Uh, the cream polish is gonna provide even more of a shine than just the Renovator. Each step of the way as we add waxes, we build that foundation of waxes, these shoes are gonna look progressively better. Mm. Beautiful. Great. So next, again, while this shoe is drying, I'm gonna take some of our uh, Pat Deluxe wax polish, apply my first coat. This again is a pigmented wax polish. 
It's our Pat Deluxe. Um, I mean, this stuff really lights up. What's nice about the Pat Deluxe is you can apply it to the entire shoe. It's not the mirror gloss, which you would just use on the hard countered areas like the toe and the heel. And so this is uh, going to contain more hard waxes, uh, less pigment than a cream polish, but a higher concentration of hard waxes that's going to provide that high shine. Uh, in addition to the high shine, these hard waxes are actually really important for just the overall protection of the shoe and the leather. Uh, it's the hard waxes that are going to help uh, just protect the leather against water spots, uh, any type of uh, liquid stains, uh, even, uh, you know, pretty, you know, light protection against scuffing. You know, if you were to scuff your uh, shoe on something that's not abrasive, oftentimes those uh, hard waxes will kind of provide that buffer to protect the leather from actually being damaged. So uh, I always recommend, even if you're not into high shines, to at least have, you know, one coat of a hard wax polish on the entire shoe, um, even if you're just going to buff it off with a horsehair brush to provide that soft shine. And then here, you know, where we have the scratches, uh, again, the hard waxes are what is going to actually kind of fill uh, those scratches and kind of help further conceal them. So the hard wax, quite important. And again, I'm just providing it with, or applying it with my chamois across the entire shoe. Really gonna kind of push it in to the toe cap. This is really, I guess, doing a little bit of foundational work for what will become the mirror shine later. Uh, but just working this into the entire shoe. When you're applying a hard wax to the entire shoe, uh, again, don't go crazy. Uh, it is possible to apply too much, especially here across the vamp where the shoe flexes. Uh, if you apply too much hard wax right here, what will happen is you'll wear the shoe and those hard waxes will crack uh, and then provide or produce a little bit of caking or a little bit of kind of a white dust right here. Easily fixed just by buffing it off. But uh, again, whenever it comes to the wax polish, I wouldn't do more than one coat uh, across, the, across the vamp. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start applying this to some of the edges, just a little bit. I mean, again, uh, the mirror gloss is my wax of choice whenever it comes to the edges. But uh, again, the order that I'm doing this in uh, is ordered this way to allow me to be a little bit uh, indiscriminate in, in my application of these waxes. Okay, so while the wax is drying on the other shoe, I'm gonna buff the first coat of wax polish off of the right shoe. And uh, you're really gonna see how this stuff works here. So this is my favorite part. I mean, I really just love to see a pair of shoes light up like this, I and mean, it's such a testament to the difference that a little bit of shoe polish can make. Uh, I mean, again, we could have stopped with the cream polish, but look how much better these shoes look with a little bit of wax polish. Now again, you want to allow these waxes as much time to dry. So I'm going to start with the application of the mirror gloss, but this is the Saphir mirror gloss. I mean, this is the polish uh, that really I helped develop with Saphir. So this is the magic. This is what helps uh, really accelerate, or it's the shortcut to that mirror shine. Uh, again, those hard waxes, you need to build up that foundation to kind of fill in all the pores of the leather in order to create that mirror shine. So uh, this is done in several stages. Uh, first is you want to build up a, a foundation of these hard waxes. So I do several applications of the mirror gloss using my high shine chamois, really pushing it into the pores. So you want to use a medium to firm pressure to really get it in there. I'm also going to apply a generous coat of the mirror gloss to the edges and the heels. Again, I'm gonna let that start to kind of set and dry. And then you wanna take a little bit of water and then begin to buff that to a higher shine. I do that maybe two or three times before then introducing the Pat Deluxe. I like to take just a little bit of Pat Deluxe what I'm doing there is I'm picking up those solvents uh, and that just helps me uh, really begin to glissage or to really kind of melt those hard waxes. Not much, just a little bit. And again, we have entire videos uh, on this method. It takes time, you can't rush it, 
but the results are worth it. So I'm starting off with kind of light pressure, and then as I see it begin to shine up, I'm gonna progressively add more pressure, a little bit of water, a little bit of the Pat Deluxe, and again, until you've totally smoothed out those pores and made them all but disappear, you're not gonna get that really high shine, uh, mirror shine that pops. So this is the point where you start kind of building progressively smaller layers and not as thick as that first application. So I've got this on. And while that's drying, I'm gonna take my chamois and begin working on the back of the heel. This is where you break your sweat. Well, I can see my smile in the face of these shoes. So that means our job is done on the mirror shine. And look at these babies. I mean, these are beautiful. This is such a great testament to, again, uh, how big of a difference a good shoe shine can make, especially whenever you take it all the way to the finish with the proper mirror shine, uh, not just on the toes, but on what I really consider to be the final frontier of really a perfectly polished pair of shoes, and that are the edges and heels. That is where you really see that additional attention to detail. So we're not quite done. The next step, or should I say the last step, uh, is to replace the laces. Uh, this is, of course, an essential step, especially of, um, you know, kind of a big, um, you know, presidential shoe shine like what we're doing here. Uh, laces are often or too often overlooked uh, in total honesty, uh, and they have a disproportionate impact of the look of the shoe. And so replacing a pair of laces really does make a big difference uh, on what the shoes look like. Now, John Lobb is really unique uh, in that of all of the uh, West End bespoke shoemakers, they're the only ones that I know uh, that really use um, unwaxed cotton laces uh, on all their shoes. And, and it was actually for that reason, after visiting John Lobb, that we actually had these made uh, for us, uh, really using the same company that they have to make theirs. And you can see these unwaxed round laces just have a softness to it uh, that you don't get with the waxed laces. And so, of course, uh, in really kind of honoring uh, the way that these shoes were made, uh, we are going to relace them uh, using these unwaxed laces. So I'm going to lace this in the crisscross pattern. We have an entire video on how to do this. Uh, so I'll just kind of breeze through this here. Uh, there is a particular way that I like to lace my shoes that makes them easier to tie. Of course, all of my shoes are laced using kind of the barbell method. Uh, it's just neater, more formal than kind of the American cross or crisscross, if you will. So it's important to cross them in the back. Uh, the reason is because if you don't, it actually makes it more difficult to tie your shoes or to cinch them tight if you just kind of take them up. So this is the preferred method. There we go, perfect. Okay, so let's throw our shoe trees in. Next, we're gonna finish these babies off just by knotting them. I always store my shoes uh, with the laces tied. Just a habit of mine. So let's pull these tight and just get a final look. Actually, we're gonna do the Berluti knot here. Why not? The Berluti and the Parisian knots. Of course, two additional videos we have on how to tie your shoelaces. If you're not using one of these two knots, um, you're wasting a lot of time having to retie your shoes during the day. And not only is it essentially a double knot that is all but guaranteed not to come untied during the day, what I like about these two knots is they just lie flat. It's not bulky like a traditional double knot that is, um, you know, literally just tied twice. But look at that. There we go. Beautiful. So 
Bespoke John Lobs, this is actually the first pair of Bespoke John Lobs uh, I've ever shined, uh, and so it's a privilege to be able to do this. Uh, this customer has actually got several pairs uh, that he sent us, and uh, they all get the same kind of presidential uh, shoe shine treatment, taking it all the way up to the mirror shine. You can see huge difference, beautiful shine on the toe, but not just there, on the heel. Uh, that is a nice shine. So I have to say, these babies are done. Of course, all of the products that we used in today's shoe shine video are available exclusively at kirbyallison.com. We don't sell on Amazon, so if you enjoyed this video, please visit kirbyallison.com and take a look at our complete collection of luxury garment care and luxury shoe shine accessories, as well as clothing accessories for the well-dressed, like this beautiful sovereign grade necktie that I'm wearing. And this is a beautiful kind of printed silk. This would be a Spittlesfield. It's got a large kind of repeating uh, pattern, and it's a beautiful kind of canary yellow that goes perfectly with the gray suit that I'm wearing, white shirt, uh, and my sovereign grade pocket square. So this is a printed silk uh, pocket square that again has a little bit of the yellow kind of in the pattern that helps kind of tie this in uh, to the tie. So there we go, step that back in there. And uh, looks great. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, let us know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed it, give us the thumbs up. And more importantly, subscribe to our channel by clicking that red button in the bottom right hand corner and turning on your notifications. I'm Kirby Allison, and I love to help the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes while exploring the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition.